how high or low your baby is within your pelvis is known as fetal station. And this is an assessment that your provider can find while they are doing a cervical exam. To determine fetal station, they're going to look for baby's presenting part, which is usually their head, in relation to the ischial spine, which is this jutted out bone here on the back side of the pelvis. If baby is above the ischial spine, they're going to be a minus number. So minus one, minus two, minus three. The numbers get bigger as they move away from the ischial spine. If they're right at that ischial spine, they're a zero station. And if they're below it, they're going to be a plus number. So plus one, plus two, plus three. The numbers get higher again as you move further away from that ischial spine. If your baby is a minus two station or higher, they're navigating the pelvic inlet. And so the type of labor positions that we want to do to create more space in the pelvis are going to be targeting the pelvic inlet or the top part of the pelvis here. And so we're focusing more on external rotation of the femurs or knees out, ankles in with that posterior pelvic tilt, which is tucking the butt underneath to create more space in the pelvic inlet. You may find that during labor, if your baby is still trying to engage into your pelvis, you tend to favor a lot of front to back type movement patterns because it's creating more space intuitively in the top of your pelvis. The next pelvic level is going to be the mid pelvis. This is where baby's gonna rotate through the pelvis after they have engaged or entered into the pelvis. The mid pelvis is marked by the fetal stations minus one, zero and plus one station. Now, depending on your personal anatomy, a minus two or a plus two may also be a part of the mid pelvis, but in general, the minus one, zero and plus one stations are the mid pelvis. So if your baby is at one of those fetal stations, we wanna focus on creating more space in the mid pelvis with asymmetrical or side to side movement patterns. And so it can be like those open lunge positions or even hip shifting to create more space in the upper versus the lower mid pelvis. After a baby has finished their rotation through the mid pelvis, they're going to be navigating the pelvic outlet. And this is typically when you're pushing. So the pelvic outlet is going to be marked by plus two station and lower. So plus two, plus three, all the way to plus five. With the pelvic outlet, we want to focus on more internal rotation of the femurs or knees and ankles out, which helps to create more space in the bottom of your pelvis. So fetal station is how high or low your baby is within your pelvis. This is gonna be annotated by the ischial spine or this jutted out bone here on the back side of the pelvis. If your baby is above this ischial spine, they're gonna be a minus number. If your baby is right at that, they're zero station. And then if your baby is below that, they're a plus station. Depending on where your baby is within your pelvis is gonna help you determine what type of laboring positions that you should do. If your baby is trying to navigate the pelvic inlet with a minus two station or higher, we want to focus on creating more space in the top of the pelvis with that extra rotation of the femurs and also that posterior pelvic tilt or tucking the butt underneath with the knees wide. If your baby is a minus one, zero, or plus one station, they are trying to navigate the mid pelvis. And so we want to create more space within the mid pelvis with asymmetrical or side to side and swaying type movement patterns. Now, if your baby is at a plus two station or lower, they're typically trying to navigate the pelvic outlet. So we want to create more space in the bottom of the pelvis with internal rotation of the femurs or knees in, ankles out. So understanding fetal station is really important to understanding what type of labor positions that you should be doing during your birth.